Coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Winterberg, Germany to follow Martin Soderstrom at the SKS Dirtmasters Festival. And we look into the technology behind the protective gear that's used in free ride mountain biking. All this and more coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles. Winterberg, Germany, home of Europe's biggest mountain bike free ride festival, the SKS Dirtmasters. It's a four-day event with four cross, downhill, and slope-style competitions. Martin Soderstrom plans to compete in all three. Sweet. You can see the course and everything from the hotel. A slope-style specialist, Martin currently sits in fourth place on the FMB World Tour. Competing in all three disciplines will be a test for him. Big, nice room. Perfect. Need it for all of my all my three bikes and all, all the equipment to do three disciplines. After settling in, Martin meets up with some friends and fellow competitors to check out the courses. Yeah, as I said, the focus looks pretty much like, like last year. But I liked it last year, so it's just good for me. Definitely. Martin heads over to check out the slope style as training is about to begin. There's already a buzz around the slope style course, with the riders getting as much practice as they can for this silver event on the FMB World Tour. Martin, Linus, and Max aren't rushing into anything, carefully checking out the course from different angles. And when I turn up to the, to the course like this, I used to just walk around and uh, just look like what would be possible. It's basically when you have started to ride, when you can start to plan your run. It's not like you just ride and what pops up to your head. Everyone is planning the run before. In a sport where you must always push the limits, riders often go down hard. <laughs> Protective gear is essential to a rider's safety. Pock is a young Swedish company at the forefront of innovation in protective gear. We like to keep developing the products because it's, it's kind of like an evolution where, you know, as the riders start going bigger and faster, they need better protection. Make it as functional as possible so it doesn't infringe on the riding it's, itself. We're using a lot of soft protectors. You know, with the guys going bigger, doing tail whips and, and back whips, you just don't want the protection to kind of infringe on their riding style. You don't want to take away from the experience. We have a lot more product development now with, with riders. Uh, Darren Bearcloth actually specifically has helped us design his own, uh, his own signature guard. As far as the, the safety goes, we, we must certify to uh, Moto standards. Um, and because of that, our, our gear, even though it is designed for the you know, hard impacts, it's still very lightweight. Darren's brother, Ryan Barracloth, is one of a growing number of riders to wear a Liat brace for spine protection. It's something I just started uh, wearing uh, last year, and uh, I, I love this thing because it's one of those things you, you don't want to break your neck or your back, and it's uh, a piece of equipment for me. It's an important piece, and uh, I always look, look to make sure I'm covered when I go for riding, especially when I'm shooting and pushing my limits a little bit. As Martin gears up, his qualifying day is about to begin. With such little time between events, Martin has to use his time wisely to prepare for each course. All right, signing is done. All three disciplines. Now it's just to get out there and start riding. The downhill race is his weakest discipline, and he decides to walk the course first. I haven't seen it before, actually. I have never been riding it, so it's going to be interesting how it looks. I'm better at the course walk on slope style and slope cross. I don't really know what to do in downhill. Mm, maybe take it a bit easy in the beginning so I have some, some energy left down there and so I have some energy left for four cross and slope style. Qualifying for four cross is fast approaching as he puts some final touches on his bike. Martin conserves his energy and easily makes it to the next round of four cross. Solid, cold round. Had a good time all the way down pretty much, so it was fun. 
Up next is qualifying for downhill. Martin successfully qualifies for the downhill finals. And with the day not over, he's starting to feel the burn. I don't want to do it the easy way. Let's do it the hard way. I don't regret it. Slope style qualifying is up next. After a day of practice, 50 skilled riders now have to put their best runs together and try to qualify for the finals. Martin's Swedish friend, Linus C. Oholm, showed the judges a little bit of everything. It was good, actually. I made two good runs that I'm happy with. Linus C. Oholm earned a solid fifth place heading into the finals. Czech Republic's Thomas Seda handled the course with ease, with good speed and some big spins to qualify third. Martin's Red Bull teammate from Poland, Shimon Gojek, surprised everybody with an amazing variety of tricks, each one better than the last. It's my uh, second year. Last year, I, uh, I was getting used to, to ride with international riders on the biggest competition in Europe. Now it's uh, much better. <laughs> With an intense early run, he qualified first and plans to raise the bar even more for the finals. I'm gonna do front flip snow hands and tail flip to bar spin. My new tricks. With the good weather and great riding, the Winterberg crowd was having a great time as qualies wound down and Martin Soderstrom dropped in for his run. Yeah, I just wanted to get a good, safe run. It was good, I actually managed to qualify second. After a long day of qualifying for four cross and downhill, Martin gave all he had left. I am really tired. At first I want to try to do a good run, but maybe nothing, nothing brand new that I haven't done before. Day four. Martin needs to overcome his exhaustion for finals. Oh, I don't know, this is, was a bit too much. In the four cross quarterfinals, Martin tries to make a pass, but misses a corner, failing to make the semifinals. Uh, I just felt when I was standing at the gate that my legs were just uh, not right there at the moment. Oh, I'm so tired right now. I need a long drive back to Sweden to sleep. In the downhill finals, Martin gave his best, but his fatigue was apparent. He had to conserve for slope style finals, his most important event. It's definitely the hardest thing I've done on a bike, all this stress, and you cannot focus on one thing, and you have to remember lines in every course. Yeah, my hand is feeling pretty bad. I probably should get an x-ray when I get home, because yeah, it doesn't feel good at all. Martin needs to push through. Slope style finals are up next. The crowd builds as the 2011 Dirt Masters Slope Style Finals are about to begin. After qualifying at the top, Shimon Gojek has to wait until the very end before he can do his winning run again. But with all the talent at this event, it's still anyone's game. Qualifying 10th is Sweden's 15-year-old Max Fredriksson, who sets the bar with a strong early run. Following him is fellow Swede Tio Gustafsson, who's been hiding some tricks up his sleeve in qualies and is pulling them out now where it counts. He takes control of the contest. Third place qualifier Thomas Zeta comes in with a solid run once again, but doesn't have any magic tricks he can add to take over Tio's top spot. He remains in third place, with the top two riders still up to bat. After a long and tiring weekend, Martin must focus if he wants to come out of it with a podium finish. After a devastating fourth place in Vienna, he knows he can't afford any mistakes to keep him off the standings this early in the season. With the fans on his side, he drops in. In addition to big airs, he also shows his control and patience with some technical moves in front of the massive crowd. Yeah. 
After coming in second last year, the fans show him some support before he goes in for his final trick. He has a great run so far and just needs one more to have a chance at his first win of the year. He lands his triple tail whip, a trick that few others in the world can do. He takes the lead. With the crowd still in a frenzy, Red Bull teammate and top qualifier Shimon Gojek has to follow Martin's amazing performance. He tries to raise the bar and goes for the no-handed front flip he promised, crashing early into his run. At the end of the weekend, Martin Soderstrom is the winner of the 2011 Dirtmasters Slopestyle competition, with Theo Gustafsson holding on to second place and Thomas Zeta in third. Oh, so happy right now. When, uh, when I started, I didn't really feel that pumped. I was so tired from the forecast and the downhill. So, uh, yeah, this is the best way to end the day. Soderstrom climbs into third place with his win at Dirt Masters. Pilgrim still has a sizable lead, but with the first gold stop of the tour coming up at 26 tricks, there should be some changes on the leaderboard. In the next episode of Mountain Bike Chronicles, we follow the winner of the first World Cup, Aaron Gwynn, as he races a US Open and zeroes in on the prestigious World Cup stop in Fort William. All this and more coming up on the next episode of Mountain Bike Chronicles.